a little bit of grace for the chair. Our theme tonight is Rhythm of Life. And those words can encompass such a large ideal of how we live our lives. They can encompass how we live day to day or just really how we navigate the next few hours. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, it's my privilege tonight and my hope that I challenge you a little bit tonight. Perhaps encourage you to actually live life on purpose and to focus on three little things with intentionality. The first thing being understanding and realizing that you are in control of your destiny. You create your own rhythm in life. Secondly, I believe that in order to support that rhythm in life, you have to be able to identify exactly and specifically what you want in life. And third, as David even mentioned, you have to believe in your own potential to be able to accomplish that rhythm in life. So with those three things in mind, we'll move through these next few moments. The first one is pretty simple. I believe you create your own rhythm in life. We look around the world and we can all see such beauty and marvel. There's so much amazing things, some things created by nature, like the Grand Canyon or the depths of the Pacific Ocean. Some things are created by man that to me are absolutely mind-boggling, like our cell phones and the ability to surf the web on them. Things like the Golden Gate Bridge or even the Eiffel Tower. These things are so mind-boggling to me, and what's really cool about it is they all trace back to some person somewhere that believed in their idea, that believed in something that maybe hadn't been done before. They believed in their own potential to see the idea come to pass. The same is true for all those individuals that worked on and have invented or created or just found compounds that help treat AIDS, cure diabetes, or treat it, and even treat cancer. All these things trace back to one person, or maybe a small group of people that put their minds together and believed in something that was incredibly impossible. My second point is realizing that we must identify exactly what we want in life, and that only supports the first point, so the first point doesn't really need a lot of time spent on it. It's simple. You are in control of your own destiny. And the only way you're going to be able to create that rhythm in life, I believe, is number two, to identify specifically and exactly what you want in life. Now, of course, most of us in this room probably want to finish college. Maybe someday we want to get married and have a good job and have kids. Or maybe we know that we don't want to get married and we don't want to have kids. That's fine. It's very specific, but at the same time, it's very broad, it's very general. When was the last time you thought, you sat down and gave some thought to the very specific things you wanted out of life? What is a good job? What is a good marriage? How many kids do you want? Do you want to travel the world, or do you want to visit specific locations like Paris and Rome, or the Grand Canyon, or Hawaii, or Stockton? don't know. <laughs> but if I want to travel the world enough, I want to be wealthy, I want to be rich. What is rich? What is wealthy? How much? You want to lose weight? How much weight? Or if you're like me, you want to gain weight? How much weight? Trust me, you'll never get what you want if you don't identify exactly what you want. I believe there's uh -huh. a lesson to be learned from children this in mind. So you ask probably any one of us in this room, most of us are, or most of you are in your 20s, and if you had the desire to go to Disneyland, you'd probably tell your friends, ah, I want to go to Disneyland so bad, I can't wait, it's going to be so much fun, and leave it at that. You find and ask any six-year-old that has a desire to go to Disneyland, and they will tell you, I want to go to Disneyland, and I want to ride Dumbo in the elephants, and I want to spin in the teacups, and I want to find Mickey Mouse, 
and I want to take a picture with him. And then I want to go find Minnie Mouse, and I want to take a picture with her. And then I want to go get, ride the log ride and get wet, and then I want to go find cotton candy, the blue kind. <laughs> and then I want to, and then I want to, and then I want to, and the list goes on. They're very specific about what they want. And trust me, they will not leave Disneyland without an earnest effort in getting exactly what they want. You see here what we have. Unbeknownst to these children is the idea that they are completely not living in a way that's desultory in life. In fact, they're living with very specific intentionality. They know what they want and they're going to get it. Another point, just to help drive that one home, let's take a quick survey. How many of you, by raising your hands, want to win the lottery? Quite a few. How many of you actually play the lottery? <laughs> Three, four, sometimes. I didn't count the first time, but we had at least eight hands. Guess what? You'll never win if you don't play I'm not telling you to go play, but you want something that's absolutely impossible. I'm challenging you to define things that you really want and that you're really willing to put in the effort to get. My third point is simply believing in yourself, believing in your own potential. And to help validate this point, I have just a few names I'm going to remind you of, maybe a little bit of their story to help drive this one home. They're all names you're probably familiar with. Tiger Woods didn't just wake up one day and start winning fancy but really ugly blazers. <laughs> he was three when he shot 48 and nine holes. Three. And he's been working on his game every day since. Mozart was eight years old when he wrote his first symphony. Mother Teresa was 40 before she started her work in Calcutta. Ray Kroc was 52 before he founded or started McDonald's. Benjamin Franklin was 79 years old before he invented bifocal eyeglasses. Lance Armstrong underwent can or survived cancer and underwent brain surgery before he won the Tour de France seven times. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. Abraham Lincoln was defeated in eight elections. But we all know these names. Not because of their failures, but because of their drive to succeed. Are you living on purpose? Where are you at in life and do you know exactly what you want and have you designed a plan to achieve it? For the sake of time, I'll wrap up now with just a simple quote. I believe Steve Jobs said it best. The people who believe and are crazy enough to believe they can change the world are typically the ones that do. Thank you.